Oh, hello, me lads! Yo! Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am Nick from Australia. Welcome to the Rugby League Breakdown Podcast, episode number 30. Hope you guys are doing well on this wonderful Friday night, currently 8.02 p.m. here in New South Wales. Tonight, um, we will be joined by Rugby League YouTuber Sam Revel, as you guys can see on the screen. Unfortunately, there will be no Pro Enzo vids tonight. He is unavailable, unfortunately, but the show goes on. Sam, mate, how you going, bro? I'm very well, thank you, Nick. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, chat. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, just yeah. another day in the NRL world, mate. A lot of news. Plenty to talk about, mate. There's no doubt about it. Obviously, a lot has been happening. Um, yeah, so much shit to get into, but um, before I get into anything, I just want to say that this video is sponsored by Manscaped, the Lawn Mower 4.0, guys. I've said it a thousand times. I will say it again. It's a great shaver for your balls. Seriously, um, if you're going to have a shave, you won't nick yourself if you get the Lawn Mower 4.0. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. It has new skin safe technology, so you don't nick your balls, bro. I'm telling you, it's must get. It's recommended. The package comes with the Lawn Mower 4.0, the ball deodorant, ball toner, and other great stuff. So, guys, Go and check out Manscaped for a discount code. The, the discount code is NFA. You can see it in the corner, right here in the corner or wherever, wherever it is. It's in the corner. So um, thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring the video. But um, I say get out of the chat. I can see the chat is going absolutely berserk. We've got about 21 people in here. It's going to be hard to catch the whole chat. Whoa. But um, shout out to, to the live chat. Hope you guys are all well. Um, I can see Warriors and Animal Fanatics is here. We've got Jack. Jay Lockyer, Metallic Panther, Jason Reed is there. Daniel Sexton's in the house. Paddy G is in the house. Shout out to Paddy G. Big regular YouTuber, Paddy G. Shout out to him. He says the Ashes is so close. Yes, it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't even, can't even cut the chat. I can't even, can't even keep up with it. Can't even keep up with it. The bunny chick's in the chat as well. Paddy G hey. says, Manscape shave keeps the misses. <laughs> <laughs> well... Maybe it will. Maybe it will. But um, make sure you guys go ahead and like the live stream as well. You won't be disappointed. I've noticed YouTube has got rid of the dislike button, so the trolls can't get involved anymore. That They're miserable. They're vulnerable. <laughs> They've got nothing left. They're fucked. They're too busy in their mum's basement doing nothing. So um, the trolls have got, have got nothing on us now. <laughs> what are they going to do now? What are they going to do now? There's no more dislike button for the trolls. What are they going to do? Don't know, They're mate, just fuck all. Don't, don't know nothing. nothing. But um, Bill said he can still see it. Well, if okay, if you can still see the dislike button, it won't last long because YouTube's getting rid of it anyway. So um, the trolls have got no chance anymore now. But um, Sam, mate, how was your day, bro? How's your week been? There's obviously a lot of a lot to talk to, but mate, how how you been? Mate, I'm just hankering out for that Manscaped product to come into me mail, mate. I haven't shaved me cheeks in a couple of weeks since I used your discount code NFA all those uh, a couple of weeks ago now, mate. So I'm starting to get a bit hairy and a bit scratchy and itchy, mate. So yeah, no, I'm looking forward to getting that Manscaped package coming into me mail soon. But besides Fair that, um, it's just been raining, raining, raining here in Canberra. They're in Lismore, I assume. Uh, yeah, it's oh, just yeah. been a damp old bloody week. Just going to move the camera closer over here. It's bloody too far from me. Um, Yeah, bro. Heaps of stuff's been going on lately, hasn't it? Lots mm. of news, lots of rumors. It's been chaos at the moment. It's been absolutely chaos. Hard to keep chaos, up with. But, um, what's that? Hard to keep up with. Oh, it is hard to keep up. I have to, have to agree. But um, let's get into the podcast, mate. We've got plenty to talk about. But um, obviously, five topics we talk about here on the Rugby League Breakdown podcast. Some of it will be a bit off script tonight, I think. So um, that's... Let's discuss some of the latest NRL signings and players leaving and all that. Let's start off with the big one today. Melbourne Stormback Rower, 
player that I can't stand, as I'm sure everyone would know by now. Felice Kafusi signs with the Dolphins. The first signing for the Dolphins is Felice Kafusi. We'll start with you first, Sam. What do you think about this signing for the Dolphins, picking up Kafusi? Uh, congratulations to Felice Kafusi. Uh, congratulations to the Dolphins making their first real major signing. Uh, they bought him for leadership from what I was reading. And look, uh, I don't want to bag the bloke. I don't. But um, he, you've, you've bought Felice Kafusi to go up to Redcliffe for leadership. And Wayne Bennett will keep a tight ship. He runs a tight ship. Uh, and Felice Kafusi better keep uh, his grabbiness in check, mate. Um, it's a, it's, he was going to either re-sign with Melbourne or go to bloody Queensland somewhere. So um, it's an okay signing. It's not the best signing. It's not something that should get people excited, in my opinion. But good luck to both parties, man. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, Do you really want my opinion, guys, on this? I think everyone knows what I'm going to say. Felice Kafusi signing with the Dolphins is a terrible signing. And if you disagree with that, you are a fucking idiot. It is one of the stupidest things I've seen in a while. So you mean to tell me the Dolphins are going to pick up a 31-year-old man in Felice Kafusi. Now, a couple of fans came up to came on to me today and said, Oh, Nick, you're so harsh on Kafusi. You're too negative about him. I can't believe you'd say that about him, that he's a terrible signing. First of all, it's my opinion. Second of all, I watch every single NRL game. I know who's going well. I know who's going shit. And I know who's not doing a whole lot. And let me just say this. Felice Kafusi hasn't been pulling his weight around for the Melbourne Storm for at least a couple of years now. But then people are going to say, oh, but he plays Origin for Queensland. Oh, I don't give a fuck. He plays Origin for Queensland. Have a look at the Queensland side right now. The back row position is one of their weak spots. They don't have much depth in the back row. And when they have had depth in the back row, They've all been injured. So, one, the only good thing about Kafusi is he is a little bit experienced. Don't get me wrong. On his day, he can be good. But let's be completely honest and let's be completely real here. Kafusi has two or three good games a year. He doesn't do much. He's playing with Jerome Hughes. I mean, if you're playing with Jerome Hughes, you should be going really well. But then you've got to defend that side of the field where Melbourne get targeted a lot. They've got Remus Smith there. He's not really a great defender. They've got George Jennings on that wing as well, who seems to struggle a lot in defense. And they had Dean Eremaira there as well, who isn't a great defender. And uh, Isaac Lumi Lumi didn't play much footy there, and obviously. But I don't understand what Kafusi is going to bring to this Dolphins team. I, I don't get it. What about you, Sam? What, what's he going to What's he going to add besides experience? Um, a couple of couple of sharp shoulders but besides that i'm with you man it's it's just an okay signing and i i mean what i said uh, just a couple of seconds before uh, his grubbiness man he he's done some really nasty things on that footy paddock um a lot of players have but boy howdy he stuck out like a sore thumb when he drove ryan madison's head into the bloody turf don't even mention it that I was know, bad man. enough that magic ram was magic ram was bad he punched coy norman in the face and got away with it I was That's going right. off my fucking head. I was there. I was going off yep. my rocket. It wasn't even a penalty, I think. Yep. But look, uh, under the under the um, guise of guide uh, of Wayne Bennett, uh, look, maybe he can improve, man, uh, and, and clean up his act a little bit. And he's going to need to, man, because it's just going to be completely different up there at Redcliffe. And he might get found out, but I hope he doesn't. If Felice Kafusi has been ordinary under Craig Bellamy, how is Wayne Bennett meant to make him any better? Mm -hmm. Now, people are going to say, oh, how dare you compare Bellamy to Wayne Bennett? Well, Bellamy's got a resume that's almost just as good as Wayne's. Exactly. And there's not much difference between them. They're very similar. They're both the probably the top two coaches in the game, mm -hmm. along with Trent Robinson. They're probably the three standout coaches. And yep. then 
If kafusi has been quiet and ordinary under 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 Craig Bellamy, what's he going to do with, with fucking Wayne? There's yeah, it's 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 a revitalization for him though, man. A brand new spot, uh, brand new club, man. So everyone's going to be fired out. Everyone's going to be fired out of a cannon round and one. With all due respect, yeah, go on. Tom Eisenhoof is literally right on Kafusi's tail right now. Yeah, He's a good kid. He was I awesome actually agree team. with you, man. I saw some good things from Myson um earlier this Who's season. Who's the other one? Is it Chris, Chris Lewis, the other one? Uh, yes, it was. Yes. No, no, not, not Chris Lewis. He was, was a teacher. It? The Chris Lewis was the teacher. I'm, I think that's what the, his the, name was. There was another back rower that played a, a bit there. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think who it was, but he was really good. Well, he wouldn't have been that good if he wasn't starting and we can't remember his bloody name sort of thing. But No, nah, well, I oh, think... Yeah. I think um, I think, uh, what's his name? Who did I say? Uh, Kafusi? Uh, Lewis Kafusi. What? Lewis, Chris Lewis. Yeah, uh, Chris Lewis, mate. He's, he's literally right on his tail. Right on his tail. Or is it Aaron Booth? I think Aaron Booth. It could have been Aaron Booth. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Don't Chris Don't follow Lewis. Melbourne Storm, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, I'm sick of Melbourne, fuck them. But um, I don't know, man. I, I don't like the Kafusi signing for the Dolphins. I don't see what he's going to add besides experience. And decent defense, but yeah. I think it's a shit signing. I really do. And to all the people out there that want to kiss his ass and say, oh, it's an excellent signing. It's a great signing for the Dolphins. He had so much experience and leadership. Go and get your – seriously, go watch a game of Melbourne and see what Kafusi does. He doesn't do fuck all. He doesn't do fuck all. Yeah, that's the one. Trent Lurio, whatever his name is. That's the other kid. Mate. I've seen a lot of people out there that are like, oh, Kafusi's a great signing for the Storm. No, he's not. No, he's not. If you watch NRL as much as I do, you know it's not a good signing. It's not. It's a bad signing. He definitely had a quiet season this year. Dolphins are going backwards before they even get started, the cunts. What are they doing? <laughs> Fuck me. Righto. Let's get into the real talking point. The one that I want to talk about the most. Parramatta Eels hooker, Reid Marnie. Oh, my God. This is just craziness. Reid Marnie leaves the Eels for the Bulldogs for 2023. Oh, my God. Now, I want your opinion on this first before I rip in the list. I'm, I've got some very strong thoughts on this one. But, mate, Reid Marnie to the Dogs. What are your thoughts on this whole big situation? Congratulations to him, first and foremost, to both parties, Canterbury as well. Uh, I... Man, it's it's really underhanded. Really, he did it very sneakily. This has come out of nowhere. Uh, I, I I like the signing uh, for the, for the Bulldogs, but I'm trying to put myself in Parramatta shoes, mate. And um, yeah, I'd I'd be pretty I'd be pretty angry. Actually, I, I can't blame Eel supporters for being angry uh, and being well cut. Uh, but I mean, they they lowballed him though, Parramatta, from what I understand. The Eagles lowballed him, and um, people have said for years now, where's the loyalty in the game? Well, there's got to be a bit of respect going towards Reed Marnie. Um, from what I understand, it was a 500k a season uh, offer, uh, a multi year offer for 500k, uh, and the Bulldogs came in with only an extra 150 grand on top of that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, if I was an Eel supporter, I'd be pretty cut and angry and be licking me chops for round one 2023 sort of thing when they come head to head. This is going to be a controversial thing to say, and this clip will probably end up on Instagram on the Rugby League Breakdown podcast Instagram page. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to say this. Remani has turned his back on the Eels and he has completely... Dog shotted the Eels in the back for the Bulldogs. This is a dog move. Going from your right, going from Parramatta to Canterbury, you're going from a rival club to your biggest rivals. This is a big no no. You remember when Angus Crichton left the Rabbitohs to go to the Roosters? This is literally the same thing. Reed Money is that top five hooker in the game. He's going from Parramatta to Canterbury. That is a big no no. In my opinion, Reed Money has turned his back on the Eels fans and on the Eels club. And people are going to say, oh, but Reed Money's doing it for his future. Good on him. I don't give a fuck if he's doing it for his future or not. This is a big no-no. You don't do it. 
Imagine if Carl Felt went from the Cowboys to the Broncos. Imagine if Katoni Staggs went from the Cowboys to the Broncos. Imagine if Latrell Mitchell, well, Latrell Mitchell did it as well. He went from Roosters to Souths. Imagine if Cameron Murray went from Rabbitohs to the Roosters. Reed Marnie going from the Eels to the Bulldogs is literally the same thing as fucking Angus Crichton going from the Rabbitohs to the Roosters. It's a big no-no. Should not have happened. He uh, he probably wanted to get out of there quick, smart, mate. It's only been three or odd, odd weeks since November 1st struck. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I thought he could have thought about it a bit more. And he might... <laughs> I look at that Parramatta squad, man, and I, I, I believe that they are still in top eight contention before the Reed Marnie signing. And I, I just don't know why Reed Marnie looked at the squad at his own teammates and said, I can do better than this. Um, he's obviously got an affinity for the Bulldogs. I, I believe he was uh, in the reserve grade squad a few years ago with the Bulldogs, and then they said no to him. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't think he realizes, or maybe he does, but uh, if, if he understood how important he actually is to Parramatta's chances next season, um, he probably wouldn't have done this, mate, but I'm, well, Nick, continue, mate, please. Well, here's the other thing as well. You know, we talk about players being loyal. Well, unfortunately, money talks nowadays and you get some people that are loyal. You want to know someone who's loyal, a perfect example for a loyal player Alex Johnson. Alex Johnson was shipped around for ages and he could have easily went somewhere else and got mm-hmm. 700, 800,000 a season. But you know what he did? He took a pay cut and he went, you know what? I'm going to stay at South. I'm a loyal South junior. I'm going to stay here. But read money on the other end. People are going to say, oh, he was a Bulldogs junior. I don't give a fuck if he's a Bulldogs junior. I don't fucking care. He's played at Parramatta more than he has at Canterbury. And now he's going to go from Parramatta to Canterbury. If you're a Parramatta fan, you have every right to be pissed off. Loyalty, unfortunately, Reed Money doesn't have that. Now, don't get me wrong, Reed Money's a quality player. He's a top five hooker, and I hope his career gets even better. But to go from Parramatta to Canterbury, man, fucking hell. It's one of the biggest rivalries in the game. It's a top three rivalry. Parramatta versus Canterbury, plenty of fucking history. This is a fucking dog move. Imagine if Clint Gavison went to the dogs. Imagine if fucking Josh Jackson went to Parramatta. There would be Ooh. fucking fireworks. Reed Money going to the dogs is a dog move, man. And it can be argued that uh, the Morris twins, whilst they probably already set up their, their fortune and their future, um, the Morris twins took an extensive pay cut to stay with the Sydney Roosters to try and win them a premiership. Yeah, they did. 100%. They showed some loyalty too. I'm just going to turn turn the fan off for a second because it's fucking That's okay. loud. It's fucking so loud. No worries, man. The bloody Bulldogs, man, signing just about bloody everyone on the open market. Mate, they're fucking going crazy. I, I, like, I, I know, I know, Parramatta fucked up a little bit with the contract situation, but fuck me, man. Yeah, just, just be loyal. Stay at Parramatta, man. They're making finals every year. The last couple of years, they have a chance to do something. Oh, I'd like to. Fucking- if you don't mind, mate, I want to ask you a question without notice. And yeah, Mr. On. And I want to reference Mr. Trev uh, from Shut the Gates. He was adamant that Brad Arthur was the problem and that yeah. uh, the, 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 the media was saying that the board and Brad Arthur were always at uh, loggerheads. Um, do you, uh, has that contributed to Reed Marnie's exit, mate? Well, we will talk about Paramount a bit later on about their premiership window. but Understood. By the way things are going, it fucking looks like it. Someone in the chat, Scott Duncan says, so Thurston shouldn't have went to the Cowboys. No, 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 no. That's different because Bulldogs and Cowboys is not a rivalry. Eels and Bulldogs is. It's a big no-no to be going to your big rival clubs. It's not a good not it's not a good look either. Like like I said before, imagine if Tedesco went to South. So imagine if Kiri or Kiri did he went to fucking Roosters. He was at he was at South, yeah. he was at Roosters. Yeah. Crichton did it. Dog move. Imagine if Boyd Corner was still playing and he went there, went to South. Oh, bloody hell. It's um, the same got thing. Cameron McInnes. Uh, yeah. Well, Manala. when McInnes did it, I was fucking pissed off. I went off my head. I, I came on here and did a video. I think I did last year. McInnes signs with the Sharks. And I said it was a dog move. And 
it's you don't do it, man. You shouldn't be doing that shit. Do do I, I'm not. I don't mean to sound like I'm putting you under the grill. Do do you still yeah. stand by the Cameron McInnes? Do you think that's a yeah, that's a dog move. Yeah, I still, still believe it's a dog move. move. Don't yep. fucking do that. Fucking bad idea. But I think Vettel did it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, if I think if about it, Vettel's a play for the Sharks. A lot yep. of people wouldn't remember that. I it, uh, it, it might be unfair to compare. Um, but when I think of the McInnes situation and the Marnie situation, it just feels like that the McInnes situation was handled uh, a lot more smoothly than what Reid Marnie's yeah, gone Yeah, I think about. so as well. And you got to remember too, the Bulldogs are just fr- throwing money at players, man. They've got no identity. They've got no DNA. They're just buying every player when they can. They've got no fucking structure. They've got no halfback. They're just buying players everywhere and trying to fit them all in this team. This is why Trent Barrett's not the right man for the job. That yeah, 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 not he's still got to prove yeah. himself. He certainly does, and uh, that still doesn't solve the hooking option for them next season for 2022, unless somehow um, Reed Money exits his contract with Parramatta early. And there are Parramatta fans that are saying Papa Lee yeah, and Marnie go. Rugby now. history is saying it. Rugby history is not happy. He's, he's, he's telling Reed Money to fuck off now. Mm-hmm. Don't blame him. Don't fucking blame him one bit. All right, I want to get I want to get into the good news for us, Luciana Leilua. <laughs> hey! it, it's a bit of a tongue twist to pronounce his name. I'll say it again, Luciana Leilua. Ooh. I love this kid. He has been a standout player for the Tigers. Tigers have been dog shit for a while, as we know. He's been probably in their top three better players. Signs with the Cowboys for two thousand twenty three. He has asked for a release early. Tigers want Lukey or fucking Nene or something. Fuck off. We'll give you Lachlan Burr if you want. But um, I am really happy about this signing, man. Uh, what do you think Cowboys about it? supporters, mate, def- definitely we're joining forces and we are fucking happy about that signing. Uh, I, If he comes in 2022, fine. Do not take any of our young prospects, West Tigers, uh, I, I, I like, I like the signing because he is a threat every time he is near the ball. He doesn't even have to be holding it and he's still a threat. There are always going to be two players watching him, uh, three players even at a time. And he's not even holding the ball, mate. I really like the signing. It's going to be weird seeing him in a Cowboys jersey, but gee whiz, I'm looking forward to whenever he does don it. Fair dinkum. Great, great signing. Great pickup. We this is what I've been asking for for a while now. We need a back rower. We haven't had it for a while now. Someone who's been playing for a while now, and that is Leilor. And I think it's a great signing. We definitely paid overs for him. Definitely sure. paid seven hundred thousand a year for him, which is definitely overs. But when you've been bottom four for the last four years, you need to take a fucking risk. And it's exactly what we're doing. I think it's a great signing, bro. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and make a prediction right now. I believe Luciano Leilu will be at the Cowboys by at least January because I think we need him ASAP. And Oh, exactly. Yeah, um, exactly. I, I want to I ask you this. This is a big one. Sure. Now, who were the Tigers players they want? They wanted Lukey or they wanted, was it Jeremiah Nainai? Is that who they wanted? That's right. Would you give up any of them for Leilu now? Any? No, I, I, I would go throughout 2022 uh, without... Uh, Luciano Leilua, if that meant that that sort of locks up Luki and Nanai for the next three or four years sort of thing. Um, I, I want to put a little bit more trust and faith into the into the, into the the young core group. Um, I do not want to lose either or both, even at the same time. And just quickly on Luciano, mate, and the whole Joey Leilua, Madge McGuire heat. Um, how can... I, I, how can anyone play to the best of their abilities at the West Tigers over the past three years. Um, uh, it, 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 no one really has, man. But Luciano Lalua has, for the past two seasons now, has arguably been their best, well within trenched inside the top three players at that club over the past two seasons. Um, and with a fresh outlook, a, a fresh new setting for Luciano um, up at North Queensland, man, He's not. He, he's never hit his prime, and he's going to hit his prime for us um, whenever he does don that jersey, man. I think he's going to explode and be fantastic whenever he does come up. 
Yeah. No, I agree. But um, you're 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 not gonna like this. I think I think I think I think you're gonna explode. I would give up Jeremiah and Nainai for Leilua right now. That's that would be the least painful one. Uh, yep. That would be because he's just only played with the three odd first grade games with thereabouts, but he's sh- shown tremendous uh, promise. Um, but don't get rid of bloody Luke. Don't lock keep up Luke, Luke mate. Fuck's sake. I don't care if you have to play him over. So we've got to keep him long term. So, is, is it fair to say, and would you agree and be happy with this if it was Luki, uh, Leilua, and Cotter as a second row lock love combination? It. Yeah, man. Love it. I fucking yeah. love that, bro. I would give up um, Jeremiah and Nainai because I don't even see him getting in the 17 next year for us. It'll be interesting, mate. Yeah, I agreed. Um, I don't see him in the 17. Hmm. Where is he going to play? Like I don't see him getting in. Like I think, I, I think Mitch Dunn's in front of him. I think um, Ben Condon's probably in front of him as well for mine. Mm. A bit more proven, Ben Condon. He's actually shown some good stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I think. I don't, I don't think Jeremiah Nano is going to get much minutes. So I think it's best that we let him that we get rid of him now and get Laylor. Don't want to lose any of them, but I. I... Well, I do want to respectfully disagree. I, I, I do want to dis, uh, uh, disagree with you. I I look at Mitch Dunn, and it's oh. probably a strong term, mate, but it's a watershed year for Mitch Dunn. Uh, he's off contract at the end of 2022, um, and he, he could be that player that goes off to the West Tigers. Um, He'll be a dolphin for sure. So Dunn will I, be a dolphin. I'm fucking telling you. Yeah, He'll be true. a dolphin. True. Um, I bet you, I, I, I bet you ten bucks he'll be a, he'll be a fucking dolphin. He'll handshake over the fucking stream yard. He'll be a, he, Mitch Dunn will be a dolphin. I fucking guarantee it. And there are a lot more players off contract at the end of twenty twenty two for North Queensland. Um, not as heavy as the situation that Parramatta find themselves in. Um, but it, it, that's neither here or there. I, I I'm freaking excited. It, I, I think you said it best that this is one of the more exciting uh, four. Uh, uh, Ford acquisitions uh, Cowboys have made in years, in years, man. You know why Mitch Dunn's going to be a Dolphin? Go on. Because he's a fucking has-been at, at, at our club. Ooh. He's got no fucking idea. He thinks he's fucking Wade Graham. And he's, the cunt's fucked. I'm watching him out there on the right edge. and He's got no idea what he's doing. He thinks he's a halfback. And then he, and, and then he, runs, a, he runs off a, off a short ball. He doesn't even make 10 metres. And then he kicks the ball. Cunt goes dead. Seven tackles set. And then we can see the two tries. Nah. He's got errors in him. Yep. Send him to the Dolphins. He's a reject. Has been. Get him. Get rid of him, man. I used to like Mitch Dunn. I think he's hopeless. Get rid of him. I would I would have five Shane Wrights over Mitch Dunn. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, uh, yeah. As I said, Mitch Dunn, uh, he's got a massive preseason. And he's got a massive year ahead of him. That's for sure. If he makes the if, if if he makes the team, that'll fucking do me. I'll literally. I'll tell you what. Someone might want to record this, so so I don't forget about it. Um, if Mitch Dunn is in the Cowboys one to seventeen for round one next year, I will come live on here on the late night show, and I will pour Coca Cola cans over my fucking head. <laughs> if Mitch Dunn's in that seventeen for round one, can't fucking no way. Can't pick him. Seriously, you can't pick him. Now let, let's get into the other news. The dogs, they're in, the, they're, they're in, they're in the news more than the fucking Kardashians. Seriously, they're in the news every <laughs> fucking hour. It feels like they picked up Viliami Kikau. We missed out on him. To be honest, I'm glad we did. We paid way fucking too much. We would. God have. knows what the Bulldogs offered the bastard. It would have been at least nine hundred, maybe eight hundred. But we offered him eight hundred a year. So God knows, God knows what we um. What, what the dogs offered fucking really only kick out. But what do you think about this signing? Kick out of the dogs, obviously, the guy who took the photo got sacked. What do you think about this one, bro? Kick out of the doggies. Fantastic signing, mate. Um, uh, congratulations to him as well, mate. But, well, there's there's no but. I like kick out defense. I, I think he's improved in that department. He still needs to improve his attack. He still looks. Still looks a little bit clunky um, in does. attack, but his defense is why I would have wanted 
him up at Townsville. That's for sure, man. So all the best to him, man. Um, Gee whiz, these, there's some megastar players that are going to have to play 2022 knowing that this is going to be their last year. And the cream is going to rise to the top as so far as mental strength goes, isn't it? Won't it, mate? It's going to be really interesting to see who has a lackluster year or who explodes. Well, I was, I was, having, a, I was having a private conversation on Instagram to my good friend, Rugby League History, and he, he suggested to me that there should be an open window at, the, at, at say, say, December or January or something that way they can trade players and get the transfer going and then the salary cap, they can work it out for themselves. You know, they can send one player here to this club if they need to get under the cap or if they're over, they can switch a few things around. I think there should be a, a trade window or some sort of system there because, fuck, man. Papali in money's last year at Paramount. If Paramount start going bad, then it'll be a distraction and then all this bullshit drama. Yeah. Lailu like, won't be at his best because... He's unhappy and all this situation. But oh, for the dogs, I think it's a good buy for the dogs. The dogs are building, but they still haven't bought a halfback. That's right. They've got a makeshift halfback in Jake Avarillo. They still need a halfback. Uh, and the bunny chick had to mention it. Hey, Nick, you still got to get the Titans tattoo because they made the top eight. Look, when the podcast is over... I'm going to make a few phone calls and get it all sorted out. So don't worry. It's coming. It'll be done before the end of the year. Just be patient. It will come when everyone at least expects it. No worries. It'll be a big surprise. I don't want to fucking have to get it, but it'll be done. So let's not try to talk about that bullshit. But um, any other signings that we need to talk about? Oh, there's, there's so... Well, it's not a signing, but it is a rumor. Um, that Nick Chotrich, uh, back to oh, Canberra. Oh, yes. Mate. Yep. From what I understand, it's a done deal. Nick Chotrich's yep. going back to Canberra, which I think's a, which I think's a great signing for the Raiders. But where the fuck's he going to play? I mean, is Gerald Crocker going to have to retire? Because look at their back line. Ooh. Nick O'Clock started fullback. Rappiner on the wings was Rappiner and Somerson on the wings. Senna's. Croker, Savage, Chris, and Holly Smith Shields. Kotrick's going to play center probably if he goes to Canberra, but who misses out? Does Croker miss out? Uh, I would look at uh, Bailey Simonson, unfortunately, for the young man. Um, he's oh, well, had some he's, decent he's moments. He's gone. But Simonson would probably end up going uh, if, if he was the one to miss out on the um, regular starting 17. But I would choose Totrich over uh, Bailey Simonson. Nick should not have left Canberra in the first place. The yeah. instant he played uh, for the Bulldogs in round one, uh, he looked homesick. Uh, and I'm freaking stoked that he's coming back to the club, mate. He, he, he could be an absolute... Uh, well, he is a weapon, but he could go to another level sort of thing uh, back in familiar surroundings next season, man. So I'm bloody happy he's coming back to Canberra. I think it's a goodbye for the Raiders. The Raiders missed Kotrick last year, I think, in some games. Um, I think he's a better winger than a centre, but I think he'll play centre if he goes to Canberra. And if Simonson's the one that has to be sacrificed, Simonson will end up leaving. And if I'm looking at a club with Simonson right now, I'm just looking at the Broncos and I'm like, they could use another winger. So who True. knows where Simonson will end up if, he le if that happens. But Kotrick to Canberra, I think, would be a really good pickup. Is there any other signings that we missed out on? Uh, there's so much, man. Um, and just quickly, man, Jared Croker missed Nick Chotrich last year. And you're right, man, Canberra as a whole missed him last season. Just lost that little bit of X factor in him um, this season, I should say. Um, yeah, uh, to uh, Big Tino. Big T Tino for uh, Suomala Aoi. Uh, he's re-signed with the Gold Coast Titans until 2026. Um, he was, it's surprising because I, I, in my heart of hearts, thought he was going to go off to the Dolphins. Um, but he turned down Wayne Bennett and he's looked at his squad and he's gone, we, we got some promise here. And I, I, I love, I love, I, I love the, um, the, the confidence and, and mateship and teamship. Uh, uh, so good, good on Big Tino for sticking with Gold Coast for another four years. Oh, I, I don't want to say this because it might be a bit too far. But um, Tino Fasul Malawi re-signing 
He just committed career suicide. He's not making finals for for years now. His career's gone. He just fucking he just committed missing finals. He's gone. Nah. I saw his little interview where he's like, oh, I want to be loyal and make this club go good. we got great quality here. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Fuck me. Fuck me. What is this, Titans? Fuck me. They'll be lucky to be fucking top 12 next year with what they've fucking got at the moment. No hooker, no halfback. And then, and then you've got other people online saying Titans are a top eight team. Yeah, totally top eight. They uh, have a top eight Ford pack. They got a really yeah, big do. Ford pack. That's um, about it. Questions oh in the halves and the well, it's their spine. It's their spine. I don't question individual abilities, but how quickly are going? Are they going to be able to work it out um, and work off the back of their top eight Ford pack? Uh, Jaden Campbell at full back, Brimson and Sexton in the halves, and then your hooking option. Bloody hell, mate. I mean, Aaron no Clark. Pressure, no pressure, Aaron Clark. I I think they're fucked. I think we have a rugby league history fake account in the chat. Oh, no, man. Because I'm just oh, reading no. it, and, a, and rugby league history is saying his real name. It looks a bit dodgy for me. Rugby League History, if you're watching this, let me know if that's you because it looks like a fake name, a dodgy fake account. Just let me know, mate. Um, Sam, I'm sure you'd be able to find out on the live chat maybe. I probably I probably can't see shit, but it looks like we have a fake account. No, I think it's him, mate. It's not oh, fake. Anyway, anyway sorry, sorry, okay, sorry Rugby good. League History. Sorry, sorry mate. Good, good, good. I don't know. It just looked a bit dodgy for a second. That's all. Okay, all good. Oh, uh, yeah, Jaden Sullivan. Um, he re-signed. Not really proven. Oh, he's proven, but he's not amazing yet. No, he's not proven yet, but he has shown great glimpses. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's a good signing for the Dragons, mate. Gee whiz, that Dragons, I, I good, don't know Goodbye, how... Amon. He's gone. I, I, yeah, but I still don't understand why people look at the Dragons and say they're going to cop the wooden spoon up the backside. I don't understand that, mate. You look at their forward pack. They're huge. I'll, t- I'll tell you a little story. Sure. La, uh, what was it? This, uh, this morning, I, um, I, ch- ch- I was having a punt out on, on sports bet. And I, I was look- looking at the NRL odds for next year, and the Dragons are favourites of the wooden spoon. And um, I, I messaged sports bet. I said, why are the Dragons favourites of the wooden spoon? And they said, oh, the market believe the Dragons will finish last next year. And I said, okay, well, what's the reason behind that? And that and they go, oh, look, we just think that, 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 that they're not that great of a team and the barbecue effect is still in place. I'm going, the barbecue effect? They got rid of that fucking disease. They got rid of that. And then they, and, and they reply back, is there anything else we can help you with today? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Give me a Decent fucking bonus answer. Back. Give me yeah. a fucking bonus bet. And they're like, oh, we don't have any available at the moment. And I read 10 bucks on Dragons to make finals. And, 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 and then he replied back with a laughing emoji. <laughs> I'm not going to throw money on Dragons to make the eight, but I'm like, fuck, man. They're, they're not nice on the Dragons, are they? No. Uh, likewise with North Queensland. I still look at West Tigers. I, I Sorry for giving out a prediction or what about, but I still say look at the West Tigers want, and say 16. I still look at the West Tigers and say 16th. Oh. Oh, I don't mean it. Yeah. I mean, I, I want Jackson Hastings and Adam Dewey to to lock up and load, man. Whenever Dewey does come back and just do some great mm-hmm. things for that fucking club, man. Because the day that they make the top eight, whenever that will fucking be, will be an amazing fucking day, dude. When the Tigers play finals again. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I reckon that'll do with the signings, and that we can sure. talk about it a bit, bit more later if if there's more that we've forgotten. But I'm sure the chat will let us know. Got Topic number four. Mm. Now, this is a big one. Josh Alloway, Oshay Alloway, <laughs> whatever he calls himself nowadays, Peter Valandis mm. made up at the fucking NRL Dalliums. Josh Alloway is the first NRL player to get the COVID-19 disease. Apparently, he's fully vaccinated, so he will be fine. Probably just needs to stay in home, stay home for a few days, can't leave. This is big news, man, and this is terrible news as well. It's terrible. I guess the real question is here, 
should the NRL mandate the COVID vaccine on all NRL players now because one player has tested positive to the virus? What do you reckon? Mate, I, re- I, I, wish, I wish I had a bit more time to research and formulate a really good answer for you, mate, because there's one I've got. But I just want to say that Josh Alaya was sparring with Joey Leilua, and Joey Leilua has also copped COVID-19 yes. as well. Um, and if you, and I've drawn comparisons already so far, um, and I'm going to draw another one. You've got Aaron Rodgers for the Green Bay Packers in the NFL that got struck down with covid uh, he missed one week and he was back on. Uh, I don't know how he got over it so fucking quickly. Um, I mean, he's obviously, and especially him not being vaccinated as well, man. So he's gotten over it quickly or something's happened, man. Um, no, I, and the, the Peter Volandis and Andrew Abdo, I think they've come out and said, we're not going to mandate it, but it's the actual club's that have said, no, you want to play for us, you got to get the jab. We have said at nauseum throughout this season, Nick, that players, uh, if they don't want to get the jab, they don't get the jab. That's fine. It's, it's, it, they should choose what goes into their bodies or not, man. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Um, but it means that you're going to have a tougher time than the rest of us. And if you're prepared to cop that and do the right thing, uh, and quarantine and what have you, that's fine. Um, but no, they, they, I don't think it should be, um, uh, I don't, I don't think it should be mandated. I don't think it should be, um, you know, the, the green card to get you to play rugby league, mate. So that, that's just, that's just my really quick formulated off the cuff answer. I think the NRL have no choice now, but to man to mandate the, the COVID vaccine, I think they have to now. I mean, if you have a look at it. The dumb bitch in Queensland, Palaszczuk, she's made it mandatory for um, people to go to the footy and go to the fucking um, other places, I guess, in Queensland. You can't go to the footy if you haven't been jabbed. You can't play if you haven't been jabbed. And I think that'll probably happen in a lot of places in Australia. So, look, man, I'll be honest with you. I've had both doses of the of the Pfizer vaccine. I've had, I'm, I'm fully vaxxed. I'm all good. I can go to the footy, I'm pumped. But I think every NRL club and player will have to be vaccinated. Otherwise, yeah. they won't be allowed to play. Now, I don't know if everyone's jobs place, everyone who works or everyone who, whatever, I don't know if their places is all full, it has to be man, man, mandatory. But I think everyone should just go get the job, man. Like, go, go, go get the jab, man. It's not going to fucking hurt. I mean... That hurts more than a jab. Trust me. Yeah, yeah it Trust does. Me. Well, how about this? That hurts more than a jab. Believe me. Know. That hurts yeah, more no, than a jab. Um, it I fucking just, doesn't hurt. From what I understand, and this 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 gentleman has been probably the, the biggest antagonist um, against getting the vaccine is Josh Papali'i. Um, this is unconfirmed from me. I, 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 he has gotten the vaccine or he has agreed. Uh, to get it. So if Papa Lee, who's been for me the biggest proponent against getting the vaccine uh, in order to play, if he's going to now get it or if he has already done it, then it's just that that those walls are closing in on people where you're just going to have to get it now sort of thing. I'm fully vaxxed, man. So get likewise. Just go get it. Fuck me. Just if you want to play footy, if you want things to go back to normal, then just go and have it, man. It's not the end of and, the world. And, well, it's it's cost John Asiata his job now too. Yeah. But yeah. He's now going to be working on a construction site and he leaves behind a really good career. Well, not a – he leaves behind a good career. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, only, there's going to be a couple more players, I feel, that are probably going to have their contracts terminated. I'm just um, reading a live chat. Logan yeah. says – I believe Andrew Abdo said in the NRL 2022 launch, he said he won't mandate it unless the government says so. Well, I think that is all. That is correct. That is absolutely correct. But I think yeah. the government will tell him that. Look, you're going to have to get it. You're going to have to make it mandatory because it's too risky, man. You, you, you don't want the NRL to go and lock down for a week or two, or you know, every couple of weeks because players aren't jabbed and and it infects a lot of the players. So. 
I think everyone just has to get fully vaxxed. And if they get the virus and they, they go away for a week and then they come back, it's like if you get suspended or you get injured, you know, you go out and then you come back when you're all good. So I think I think it should be mandatory. You, you think it shouldn't be, but I think I think it has to be mandatory now because Josh Alloway got it and I think I think it has to be mandatory, unfortunately. So it is what it is. This this, to- this this topic alone we could talk about for fucking two hours, man. Oh, mate, we'll talk about it, we'll talk about it all night if you wanted to. Topic number three. Now, this is something that I l- want to see happen, and I love this a lot. I'm a big fan of it. I've loved it for fucking years. I will continue to love it. Should the World Club Challenge happen in Australia in 2022 in February, the Penrith Panthers have invited St. Helens, the Back to back to back champions over in the Super League. St. Helens have won the last three grand finals over there. They have been a juggernaut. They have been elite. The Panthers have invited them over for the World Club Challenge for 2022. St. Helens um, wanted it to be in England. Penrith don't want to travel over there due to the COVID risk in England right now. Australia should be 95% double dosed by February, you would think. If yep. not, um, I'll be very surprised. I guess the question is, Sam, should the Rugby League World Club Challenge between Penrith and St. Helens go ahead in 2022 if St. Helens have been all fully vaccinated? If, if if they bring over a squad that are fully vaccinated, there is absolutely no reason why they can't come down and have it occur. Um, I missed the World Club Challenge earlier this season. And if different sport if the american women's football team has flown in from the united states and on the same day on the same day went to taronga zoo to go pat koalas and shit man then a rugby league team can come down and quarantine for 48 hours and then go out and play the world club challenge i think it would be a marvelous fucking event if it did take place at combank stadium for example Yep, I agree, and I believe pretty much everyone's been jabbed over in England. I'm pretty sure everyone's been fully vaxxed, and um, I'm pretty sure what's what's his name, Boris Johnson, the guy over there that that runs everything over in England, uh, the Prime Minister, I think he is. Um, I'm pretty sure you can't fucking. I'm pretty sure you can't get into a venue if you're not fully vaccinated, especially at the footy. So everyone would have been double jabbed, and the World Club Challenge needs to happen, man. It's big. It's a big event. It's it big is. for the game, and I'm telling you right now, Penrith v Saints, I love this game, man. I'll, I'll tell you another thing. Nathan Cleary won't, won't be playing. So Saints will have Oh, that's true too, isn't it? Shoulder. We, we, mm. we, we, he, he's in doubt for round one. R- round three for Cleary is realistic. Round one's yep. rushing in. There's no way he'd be fit for February. And Saints, they've got a fairly s- similar team, but a couple of new players, so it'd be a fucking huge event. And then the other day, I saw a couple of people online talking about, oh, the Super League is not as good as the NRL. Well, we know that. And now, like, oh, they try to compare it to Queensland Cup, these people. And I'm going, oh, well, you don't even, we don't even watch it. You don't even watch Super League. So how, how can you judge it? St. Helens over here would be a top six side, in my opinion. They are fucking lethal, man. If They're St. Helens came over here, they guarantee a sellout. A lot they of just neutral rugby quality. league fans would want to go check out um, St. Helens for sure, man. St. Helens are quality, man. They won the last three grand finals, and there's no better way to do it against Penrith. And they'll be without Cleary, so Saints would have a big chance. And let, let me just say this. Now, people are going to explode when I say this, and I don't really care because I've watched the Super League. I watch, you know, I watch all the games I can. I watch every game of Super League. That's on Fox, no matter if it's fucking 11 p.m., 10 p.m., whether it's 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning. Hell, even if it's 5 a.m., I'm up watching every game. And I'm just saying right now, if St. Helens are at full strength and they're playing Penrith, who, who do not have Cleary, if Cleary is out and Saints are at full strength, Saints win. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. People are going to go, oh, you fucking idiot, Nick. What are you talking about? They've won the last three grand finals. And everyone goes, oh, the quality isn't as good. You can only play what's in front of you. And Saints have been quality for a while. So there's no reason why. And when you win three grand finals in a row, the motivation starts to kick in, try and get that fourth one. 
They haven't played a World Club Challenge for two years and they want a World Club Challenge. And to play Penrith, I think it'd be great for the game and I think it has to happen. And I hope it I, does I, happen. As a Cowboys supporter, mate, I, I, I ask you because me, I'm yeah. fucking proud that we won that World Club Challenge against Leeds, mate. I'm very yeah, look, bloody stoked that we got a World Club Challenge to, like, for our name. We were man. always going to win that game because Leeds had a lot of changes going That's into true. That, going into the next year. It's true. But they had a lot of players that were very it's still um, very. But as you said, you can absolutely. only beat what's in front of you. Yeah, the Cowboys were always going to beat Leeds. But look, teams have gone over there and struggled before. I mean, the Broncos have gone over to England and struggled. I think the Sharks played Wigan in 2017 in the World Club Challenge of 2017. February, I believe it was, and the Wigan kicked their ass, twenty-two-six. Mm. St. Helens almost beat the Roosters. They had, they had, they played some great games with Saints and Roosters. They had a couple of good games, and Wigan and Roosters also had a really good game a couple of years ago. So, Penrith v Saints at Stadium Australia or Bank West, I couldn't care less where it is. It'd be it awesome, off. man. It'd be so- yeah. I think Bank West would be better, like you said before. I think it'd be much better. Um, get, j- just another question without notice, Nick. Man, I'd like yep. to see a couple more World Club challenges come down to Australia, like once every four yes. years or thereabouts. Man, just a really good event for. I, I don't see why that. I, I don't see why they don't do it every year. I genuinely don't. Oh no, I, I, I do. Um, I, 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 I like seeing. Um, uh, England ho- host the event personally, but yeah, once too. every four years, man, just to refresh things, bro, um, w- would be good, man, for sure. Oh, well, let's hope it happens. I-, I think it'd be fantastic. So, hopefully, the World Club Challenge goes ahead in 2022. Oh, oh, it'd be awesome. It's already announced it will be at Penrith Park. Is that fair, if, Saint, if Saints agree, if Saints agree, if then yeah, it will be at Penrith. Oh, true, then true. Okay, no, no cool. Cleary. No, Crossy hasn't been jabbed either, so that could be vulnerable. Mm. I could be vulnerable. Should he might not even be playing for fucking Penrith, mate. If Parramatta, for example, snap up at the Coruscant over the next month or so, bro. Well, you heard it here first. Sam's got the fucking inside rumors. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's just um, yeah. So Api Coruscant, um, I believe uh, he if if someone wanted him. Um, badly enough, and they've got, got, got the cap space. Um, Appy has that ability to say, Oi, Panthers, can I go? sort of thing for the right price. And I think he'd be right to go, sort of thing. Um, and Appy would be a good fit, replacement uh, for the Paramount Eels, Reed Marnie. We've got a question in the chat from some guy named, what a what a weird name. It says, Yo, guy on the right with a brawny t shirt. You're not supposed to use Manscaped products on your head. <laughs> uh, what would you well, know? That makes, well, no, 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 no. Well, that makes me a dickhead then, doesn't it? <laughs> um, well, no, that, hey, bro. No he's, no, he's knocking me shaved head, but that's all right, man. No, it's 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 good. I'm just smooth as, bro. I, I appreciate you noticing, though, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lars Cream Pie Lars, mate. That's, that's all it's good. a very, very strange name. Very strange. <laughs> right, let's move on to topic number two, man. Um, good... It's about Parramatta. We spoke about him a bit before, but let's get into it for real now. Why is everyone leaving Parramatta? The question is, Sam, is the Parramatta Eels premiership window gone? No. No, it's not. Uh, and it's just bad uh, management, roster management, um, from the club to sort of uh, have it that at the end of 2022, the whole game changes, man. Um, so, uh, but again, we, well, as we mentioned before, Brad Arthur and the board have been at loggerheads uh, throughout the past two years, um, at least. And maybe Reed Marnie's had a gutful of it. And I don't know, man, I... I it's. I think it's just bad timing. It's bad management to have all these contracts all end at once. And Cowboys are sort of in a similar situation. But um, no, yeah, I think it's just bad management, bro, from the Parramatta Eels, man. I believe the Eels premiership window is over. I believe it's done. I don't know how they're going to go in 2022. They've got off-field distractions now with Marnie going to Canterbury, which is not going to go well with the playing roster that they currently have. 
Papali'i's going to the Tigers. Gutherson wanted more money. Moses is up and down. Dylan Brown's a fucking idiot. I don't know what's going on there. Junior Pulo's future is unknown. Good God. What a mess. They've got, they've lost Ferguson, which I think is a bigger loss than what people are making out to be. They've got a couple of young centers there. Walker Blake's are, are very in, inconsistent. Uh, Will Panasini's a young kid, but a little bit unproven. He's only had a couple of hand, handful of games. Dunster's decent. Sevo's inconsistent. My God. I don't know how Parramatta are going to go in 2022, but I can't see them anywhere near the Premiership. And I think they're going to really struggle to make the top eight, man. Whether they get in or not remains to be seen. But I think they're going backwards, and I think they're going to really struggle. And Brad Arthur just got re-signed. Well, he is under the pump big time in 2022. Yep. Uh, it's I, I still maintain, and I think everyone does really, that um, that it's it was a strange signing to to um, keep Brad Arthur on the books for another couple of years, man. It didn't make sense to me. Nah, it doesn't make sense to me either, man. Knowing that the deals, the contracts, um, were all going to be coming to a head on November 1st, and they have. Uh, and now Brad Arthur's really got to find a, a great game plan. He's got to fire up the troops. And Parramatta need to remain mentally switched on uh, throughout 2022, man. Um just to make the top eight. They're, you're right. They're in a dogfight next year, man. Um, they, they were certainties to make the top eight in 2021, and they did that. Um, they're certainties now. They're not certainties now. You're exactly right. Uh, and, yeah, it, it, this could be this could be a massive distraction. But, you know, if, if it's a Hollywood feel-good movie, mate, they all band together before you say Sayonara to Papa Lee and Marnie and what have you, and they win the comp. In 2022, mate. I don't think their top eight hopes have closed, but I do think their premiership window, man, it's shut, but it's not locked, sort of thing. If that makes sense. I think it's gone. I I, I think they're going to really struggle next year. Just reading the chat here. National Sports Loader says, Coruscant, Robson, Little have all been linked to Parramatta recently, just a few hours ago. By who? By who? Give me a give me a reliable source, and then I might believe you. But until then, it's just all media beat up. It really is. Yeah, it's Robinson, just fan- fantasy booking. It's yeah. all fantasy bullshit. It's like you turn on fucking NBA 2K22 and you're picking your own fucking roster and you're like, oh, try this play for this bloke here. This will be good value. Or you turn on Rob Lee Life 4 and you're like, oh, I'm going to buy this fucking – I'm going to buy Tedesco here. Oh, I'm going to buy Tupo. I'm going to buy um, – I'm going to buy Alex Johnson. It's just – it's all let fantasy me, media beat up bullshit. And but let me just quickly say that if Reece, that sorry if if uh, Robson did indeed go down to Parramatta Eels, man, that would feel Not like a, a steel steel capped boot to the balls, bro. That would suck. Not a chance in the world that's going to happen. No, nah, nah, I don't think so either. His contract doesn't run out for another two years, I think. Yeah, exactly. Still got ages. That's a lot of bullshit. But look, man. I think Parramatta are going to struggle next year to make the top eight. Whether they make it or not remains to be seen. But I am not high on them. I'm, I'm pretty low on them, man, to be honest. But that's fair enough, man. That, no, that's I fair guess, enough. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens to Parramatta. But things are not looking good for Parramatta, man. Not looking good at all. And with the whole Red Money thing, you thought the Papa Lee shit was bad. I think the Red Money shit got worse. So. And there's one more yeah. huge yeah. signing to come as well, man. They're going to lose one more... Key signing as well, Parramatta Eels. I bro. hope it's not Junior Paulo. Fucking hell. Fucking hell if it's Junior Paulo, bro. Oh, man. Crumbling within, bro. I'll call the fucking funeral service if it's Junior Paulo. Because <laughs> a, a lot of Parramatta fans are going to fucking need it. They're not going to be happy. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry Parramatta fans. If it does turn out to be Junior Paulo in the next couple of months, holy shit. No, and that's Paul Sider says, can I send the source to you on Instagram now? Yeah, send it to me. I'll have a look at it. And I'll, I'll, I'll know straight away if it's bullshit or if it's legit. Just send it to me, bro. I'll have a look at it in a sec. But um, let's, let's get into the last topic of the show. Now, it's not really a topic. It's more of a um, more of a prediction sort of thing. Um, oh, here we go. That's a sports slide that sent this. All right. Let's, let's have a look. Rock and roll. All right. It's been reported by the Paradot Eels page Instagram page. So shout out to that Instagram page. 
It says here, reports, rival hookers, Coruscant, Robson, and Little have all been pitched to the Eels in 2023. Coruscant has become a discussion point for the Eels recruitment team. Reese Robson isn't off contract 2023. Mm -hmm. However, with the Cowboys re-signing Ruben Cotton Wednesday until 2025, Robson has been... Do people not fucking... Do people not read social media? Cotter's playing lock. Are people delusional and dumb? That is that is absolute rubbish. That is bullshit. Granville's got a, probably a year left in him until he retires. Cotter's playing 13. Robinson's our long-term hooker. It's simple as that. Mm-hmm. And he's still got two years. So that's bullshit. That is, that's, that's a bullshit report. The next one. Um, Little has been spurred to Parramatta as an answer to Reid Marnie. Well, they get Jacob Little. They're gonna go off. They're gonna go put their head in the fucking toilet. That's a terrible <laughs> idea. And who's the other one? Coruscant. I thought he had a quiet year this year. If I'm going to be honest with you, who's, he had a couple of really good games. Coruscant? I mean, who's the journalist here? Like, what kind of bullshit report is this? That's what sports cited. I believe this is a bullshit report. Um, what a load of absolute shit that is. That is absolute rubbish. What a fucking dumb comment. Oh, Reese Robinson might not be happy now because Ruben Cotter re-signed. Cotter's playing lock. Granville's got like a year a, a year in him. Probably left. Being realistic. Uh, yeah, he's Robinson's got a contract a option. Hooker. No, he's got a Robinson's contract got option years. to play in 2023. Officially, his contract ends in 2022. And if he's given an option or if he takes the option, he can extend to 2023. Granville, Come I'm talking Come about. Robinson's playing front row. Robinson's, Robinson's playing hooker. Cotter's playing 13. What a dumb, stupid fucking report. Yeah. I, I don't know who's reporting that whole rumor, but fuck me, man. I, I know it's bored out of their minds, but fuck me, man. That is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Now, the final topic. Let's get into it. Topic number one. What team in three to five years from now do you see being amazing? And what team in three to five years do you see being really average? So... It's an interesting one. There's a lot of teams that could be good in three to five years' time. There's a couple of teams that could be really shit in three to five years' time. I'm going to start with you, Sam. What team in three to five years from now do you see being really, really good, being up there in the top top six, top four? What do you reckon? North, North Queensland are going to be back-to-back premiers <laughs> in 2024, mate, in 25. I'm telling you. Um, fingers crossed. Uh, I think Brisbane Broncos are going to be that side that catapult themselves back into top four contention in the next few years, man. It's just that it's coming. It's coming. And I think the Bulldogs are going to be a powerhouse as well. And a team that's going to hit hit the skids, mate. If if the if these Gold Coast Titans, man, um, can't make, I don't know, two out of the four net, uh, final series over the next four years sort of thing, um, they just might be just erased from existence, bro. Um, they're still on their last chance with Justin Holbrook, man. They're still on their last chance, and they only just scraped into the top eight this season. Lucky too. Very lucky, bro. Um, so I don't see, I don't see them. But if they, if they don't make the top eight next year, holy shit, man! Alarm bells are going to be ringing for that franchise as a whole, bro. All right. For me, team that I see doing really well in three to five years from now, there's a couple that come to mind. I'm going to go with the Dragons. I think they're a team of the future. Plenty of really fucking good kids, man. Seriously. Tyrell Sloan, Amon, Sullivan's there. Lomax, Ravalawa, fucking hell, man. I think the Dragons are a team of the future. I think in three to five years from now, they're going to be a team around the top four. I think they're going to be up there in three to five years from now. I really like what they're doing. I like what they're building. And I think Anthony Griffin is the right is the right man for the job. Hopefully they keep him long term because he's proven that he can do good things with teams that don't look the best. And we saw that in 2021. The Dragons look like they're going to – everyone thought they are going to get – Going to come last or second last. I didn't miss the eight by two games because of the barbecue. So I reckon Dragons in the next three to five years from now, they're going to be a top four side or at least up there somewhere. And the team that I think is going backwards, 
There's two that stand out for me. I think the Titans don't look the best. Their full pack's all right, but that's literally it. The Cowboys had a great full pack for a lot of couple, couple, for a few years. They looked great, great full pack, and then they fucked, didn't they fuck all? So I'm going to say the Titans are going backwards, and I think I hate to say this, but I think Newcastle are falling off a cliff, man. Uh, Pierce is gone. They're putting all their fucking baskets on Clifford, which is a massive gamble. Ponga's future is unknown. Ford Park is good. Backline is okay. I think I'm going to say Newcastle are going downhill in three or five years. I reckon they're going to be bottom four again in the next three to five years' time. That could be bloody bottom four, mate, uh, next year. We don't know. Yeah, they could. Um, but uh, at the moment, it's looking like Adam Clune and Jake Clifford are going to be the hardest oh, options. Oh, God. Oh, um, my God. Yuck. Jesus Christ. I'd rather drink vomit. That's fucked. Good <laughs> grief. Clue so, and Clifford? Yuck. Yeah. How so who, goes, who, who would you put into the 5 eighth position? Because they're both halfbacks. I'd like I, to say I, probably I, I pure halfbacks. Tex Hoy's into a 5 eight, man. Tex Hoy's not going to get it run anywhere. He has to develop into a 5 eight. Tex Hoy? He has to. Interesting, mate. Interesting. Well, Kalen Ponga put off in saying oh, all, 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 all. No, 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 no. Hang on. I, I've been saying all year that there have been rumors and talks that Kalen Ponga is on the verge potentially of talking about moving into the halves. And he only came out about 48 hours ago and put the Koi Bosch on it and said, no, I'm not going into the halves. I'm going to stay right here at fullback. And hallelujah for that, man. So I won't ever mention Ponga in the halves again, let me tell you. But um, I probably have. Because I feel so bad for Jake Clifford in a, in a sense, man, because um, Adam Clune was picked up from the Dragons and he's probably going to be their starting halfback. And Jake Clifford, that was his. Um, but now he's going to find himself still in the 5'8 position, um, not in his favoured position. And yeah, man, Newcastle, they're, they're going to be interesting to watch next year. Well, I just gave two teams. I think Knights and Titans are going backwards in three to five years. I think they've fallen off a cliff. I could fall back next year. Um, I think Dragons are on the up. Another team that I really think is on the up as well. Um, people people won't agree with this one, I, I don't think. Um, I genuinely believe that the Cowboys, I don't, I don't want to sound biased, man, but fuck me, man. We've got so much good talent going through that team, man. I see it. A lot of people don't see it because it's up north and people don't really look at the Cowboys much because they're too busy looking at the Sydney teams, but fuck, we've got some talent, man. 100%, mate. Absolutely. So many good kids. So, look, I think Cowboys and Dragons are going to be good in three to five years. Well, that could be good next year. Who knows? But I think I think their teams are the future. I think the Knights and the uh, Titans are going backwards, man. And that, and team that, that I think is going to have yeah. good success in the next couple of years. I think the Sharks are going to be great for, for the next, next couple of years. I think they're a team that could be the future as well. I think Craig Fitzgibbon is head coach as well. So, so that's what I think. But that's interesting. Just reading that comment there, Kurt, man, bro, I, I, oh, I like geez. him as a player, but I, I don't think his position is in the halves, halves bro. He is a centre um, for sure, and he'll probably find himself potentially with jersey number 14 on his back if Connor Watson doesn't have 14 on his back, I, which I don't think he will. Um, but no, Kurt, man, is a centre. Um, he's, he's had plenty of goes at half, um, and I just don't think that's his position, Kurt, man. Just some breaking news here. What's this up? Is ready, ready on Instagram, man. Apparently, News Corp are reporting that the Cowboys apparently offered Reese Robson to the Tigers to go there now to get Leilua. Oh. I don't <laughs> believe it. What? I don't believe that. I reckon that's bullshit. Oh, I'm about to go into fucking meltdown mode, man. Seriously. I don't that think that. I don't think that's true. Shit. News Corp, eh? Well, News Corp are not that reliable. Why the hell? If North Queensland offered Reese Robson as as a swap for uh, Luciana Leilua, man, I will fucking rant. I, I will, will too. rant hard, man. Todd fucking Payton's hell. A, Todd Payton's a fucking asshole. Oh, gee whiz. Okay. <laughs> Todd Payton, um, Todd Payton is lost, that far. man. I wouldn't go no that idea. far. Um, but just nothing went right for us this year, did it? Absolutely nothing went right for us this season. 
Um, so he's got, as you say, you think he's got 10 rounds. I'm willing to be more patient than that. But, I mean, yeah, if we're two and eight at the end of 10 rounds, man, then, oh, man, alarm bells well and truly on. Is that I fair, Dinkum? It, it's all fake news for me. I reckon it's all bullshit. Yeah. I don't Oof. believe any of it. All right. I reckon I might do it. But before I get out of here, guys, make sure you guys go and check out Manscaped. I want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring the video. The Lawnmower 4.0, guys, seriously. It's a great shaver for your balls, man. It's so good. It has new skin-safe technology so, so you don't nick your balls, man. And the package comes with the, the, the package comes with the Lawnmower 4.0, which is just simply world-class. The, the ball deodorant, which is phenomenal as well, and the ball turner and other great stuff, man. It's just phenomenal, man. The discount code is NFA. It's on the screen right there. But, um, guys, that's it from us, the Rugby League Breakdown Podcast. Me and Sam are getting out of here. Sam, thanks for coming on, brother. Appreciate it. Thank you, good As sir. Always, always good. Always good to have you on the show, brother. But, guys, I'm getting out of here. If Robson leaves, I'll be in the corner crying all night. <laughs> But guys, have a phenomenal night and I will see you guys tomorrow night for another live stream. Until then, stay safe. See you later and um, see you guys in the next one. Adios, man. Bye. Have a good, have a good night. Cowboys 2022 premieres, baby.